Hey everybody, what's going on? It's your host, Jessica Harris, as always, coming back to you guys with another quick word of the day. Yes, oh my goodness, I'm so pumped, y'all, for this word of the day. Hooey, listen here. All right, so the title of this word of the day is that your wealth has an assignment. Whether that's going to be the title that I actually call it, I don't know. But the title that I'm giving y'all for this is going to be your wealth not only has an assignment, but your wealth is the assignment, y'all. It's the assignment. It's the assignment of God to build up his kingdom. Yes, he will allow us to fulfill the desires of our hearts, but he is asking us to build his kingdom up first in the mighty name of Jesus. So before we even jump into this, let's go ahead with a quick prayer. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to come before you. We ask right now, Lord God, that you just continue, Lord God, to just make me less of myself and may the words, Heavenly Father, that they go out, Lord God, in the ways in which you have called them to. I pray, Lord God, that you forgive us for our sins, Lord God, for our words, our thoughts, and our actions, and that you, Heavenly Father, just continue to just reveal unto us, Lord God, the very areas and things of our lives, Lord God, that no longer suit you. And that's in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, that we humbly pray and say, Amen. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, yes, there's a few things that God has been revealing to me over the last two years, um, but one of them in specific as recently as this week that he's been pressing hard on me to share is that the wealth that we're getting ready to walk into, some of you may already have started seeing it manifesting in front of you or materializing in front of you. That's great. That's awesome. But you need to know the wealth has an assignment. It's not that you're getting wealthy just to be wealthy. It's not that you're getting wealthy so you can go on all these big extravagant trips so you can buy all these big, <clears throat> excuse me, expensive homes. That is not the purpose. That is not the purpose. Doesn't mean that God's not going to allow you to do nice things or go nice places or buy nice stuff. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the actual purpose of it though is to build up his kingdom first. You need to understand that the wealth is just an addition, but that the wealth truly that we should be chasing is God, the wealth in God, the wealth in our salvation, the wealth in trusting and believing that God is allowing us to store up treasures in heaven, not this stuff that's on earth. The scriptures that was coming to me earlier this morning, y'all know these scriptures. It's Matthew 6, 33. But I wanted to read before that as well, because there was a couple of things that he's been showing me all year, and I want to tie everything together. So we're going to start with Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to go to verse 24 and work our way down. And it says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat and what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, and neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more better than they? Which of you, by asking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take your thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They toil not, and neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore? If God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or with wall shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That is the word of the Lord. I shared those scriptures because the way he was tying to me with the wealth part that we were getting ready to walk into, along with the warnings not to get caught up. That was the scripture that he had given me to focus on earlier this year. And it's been coming back into reminder, like, listen, remember what I said. Seek me, 
Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God first and everything will be added unto you. That means that the wealth that you're getting, that means the assignments that's attached to it, they're just the additions. They're just the extra pieces. They're just the appetizers, right? They're just the potatoes, right? They're just the side dishes. They're not the main course. Earlier this year, God kind of brought it to me, the ways of a restaurant, right? When you go to a restaurant, what happens? You get seated at a table and what are they doing? They're introducing to you the bread first, right? They're giving you some free bread. They may be giving you bread sticks. They may give you a glass of water. Some may even give you a sample of wine, right? And they look yummy or it's delicious you're hungry so you're nibbling on these things but what God made it a point to tell me was that when you sit at a table like that you don't want to get full off of the bread alone off of the appetizer you don't want to get full alone off of the um the freebies that they're giving you you don't want to get full alone off of just the small portions of things because the soup and the salad and the breadsticks and whatnot that you're getting before the actual meal are not going to sustain you they're just there as an addition, but they are not the main course. I wanted to remind you guys to understand that the wealth that God is giving into your hands is not the main course. That is not your main focal point. That is not where your eyes need to be focused on. You need to be focused on what God is telling you, on what God is asking you, on abiding in him, on repenting to him, on allowing him to fill your cup up, on allowing him to direct your paths on where you need to go and whom you need to connect with and who you need to collaborate with. Do not get so focused on the glitz and the glam that you forget who God is and that you start to serve the money. Don't get so caught up in believing that, oh, this wealth is mine. No. Look at the concept that the wealth in your hands right now is God's wealth, that he's allowing you to steward for you and your bloodline and building up his kingdom. But you must seek the kingdom of God first before trying to do anything. You must seek the kingdom of God first before trying to jump into anything. You must seek the kingdom of God first before believing and thinking that you're going to touch anything. Because I'm telling you right now, there are some of you guys who are getting ready to receive this abundance of wealth into your hands. But if you do not have a vision or a plan for how this is supposed to be spent and where it's supposed to go, you will literally spoil the very blessing that is coming into your hands get into posture with God that's why he's been harping on so many of us if not truly all of us to write the vision make it plain so we can then run with it he said to me earlier this summer it is better to have a vision with no money at the moment than it is to have all the money in the world with no vision. Why? Because those who have a vision, you know where the money will go when it comes into your hands. But those who have all this money, but with no vision, you will spoil it and you will spend it all and you will splurge on things that are not necessary. Take heed to what he is telling you. You cannot serve two masters when he gives you this wealth. You should never be serving anything else but God. The money should not become an idol. Those who you start to connect with, you should not be seeing them as idols. You should be seeing them simply as collaboration partners of whom God is putting you into position for. There are some people that you're getting ready to meet even as of now that are getting ready to introduce you into higher places. There's people having, that God is getting ready to allow you to be in the presence of whom you would have never thought that you could be able to sit with but you need to understand that he is not placing you there to idolize them he is not placing you there to be a fan girl or fan boy over or a groupie over no he is putting you in position there because you have been called to a higher place you are going to a higher level because there is a space that he is putting you in in order to fulfill the works that he has placed inside of you but you need to write out the vision that's why it's so important to not only write out the vision but to partner with God in it you need to birth out this vision in prayer. You need to be in prayer. You need to be fasting. You need to be repenting. You need to be bringing a vision to God and saying, God, this is what we have. Refine it, please. God, make it bigger, please. God, expand it, please. Expand me. Expand the capacity that I have to be able to receive what it is that you are doing. Because I'm telling you, what he's doing is bigger than what you can imagine. It is a God-sized vision. September of 2021, God made that very clear to me when I was in prayer and I had asked him and I was new. I'm talking about new to the entrepreneurship world, like new, like I had just started a blog in the summer of 2021, but God made it clear that what I'm giving you is a God-sized vision. That means that 
what we have the capacity to think and to see at this current time and state can't compare to how big he's about to make that vision that he's giving you. But you need to be in prayer. You need to be in partnership with God. You need to be getting in his face. You need to be allowing him to expand it. You need to be in the position and in a posture for him to show you what is needed because what you're doing and how you're building will rely upon him. His word tells us, put no confidence in man. You are a human being. Don't put the confidence in yourself to get the vision off the ground in the way that you want it to. It will not work that way. You must, you must, you must be in the space of prayer and ask God to help you to get this vision off the ground because he has the tools, he has the strategies, he has the wisdom, he has the knowledge, he has all the pieces of which you need in order to build out this vision and the ways in which he is calling you to. But if you are not in his face, if you are not in the space, if you are not in the proper position to do it, I am telling you, you will miss the very things of which he is placing in front of you. He seals his instructions to us in dreams and in visions. My God, allow him to seal it. Be open to receive it. Stop believing that you can do it with what you already have the capacity to know. Some of you guys have, may have had visions and dreams that he has given you before that you may have worked on and you may be feeling a bit salty because it ain't worked the first time. Trust and believe and know. Sometimes he lets us start things and stop them because he's showing us something, because there's something to learn. There's something to gain. Sometimes he's helping you to build up some areas in you that you didn't have confidence in. So when it came time for the real thing, when it came time for the bigger thing, you have already gained the experience that you needed. He is prepping you. Remember, his word tells us that all things are used for the good of those who are called to his purpose, who love the Lord. I know that's like flipped in reverse. Anyways. Yes, he's going to use it. That means that even that business that failed before, he's going to use what you learned there. Even that situation that you didn't think was favored before, he's going to use it there. Even those people who sat there and came against you when you try to build out the thing that God told you to do the last time, he's going to use every single experience of which he has given you. You need to be in a space to be able to build it. You need to be in a space to understand that the glitz and glam is not your focal point. You need to be able to empty yourself out. That's why fasting is so important. That's why he has called so many, if not all of us, to fast. Because when you fast, things break off of you. When you fast, you're emptying yourself out. When you fast, you're allowing God to come in and to nurture you and to kill you and to give you the tools and strategies and wisdom and things of which you need. When you fast, you allow yourself to be given as the full living sacrifice unto him. You are a sacrifice unto him. Allow yourself to be empty of the things that no longer serve you. See, when we fast, there is an acceleration that comes forth in the things of which we're seeking God in. And that don't just mean in the natural stuff. I'm talking about in the spiritual gifts. I'm talking about an increase in vision, increase in dreams, an increase in your prayer life. I'm talking about the increase in ways of which you'll be able to hear him and see him. My God, those things are more valuable than what we can get of the earth. The earth is not your home. It is a temporary residence for us for now, but it is not your permanent place. Do not get so caught up in believing that the gifts of things and whatnot of, I'm trying to like figure out like, what can I hold? Like things like these are just things. These are mere things. These things are not what we chase. We don't chase after clothes. We don't chase after jewelry. We don't chase after getting our hair done. We don't chase after the things. My God, we don't chase these things. No, he says it. I clothe you. Do I not? Do you see how I'm able to clothe the grass? How I'm able to keep the fowls in the sky together? Would I not do the same for you? We don't chase after things. We chase God. We go after God. And because we go after God, he provides all of these things for us. Shift your perspective. You don't chase wealth. You don't chase money. You don't chase any of those things because when we chase God, he is the one who is already abundant in everything. When we chase him, everything is ours because it belongs to him. We inherit what belongs to him. He owns everything. God owns everything. We are his sons and daughters. That means we inherit him. We inherit the things. My God, let that sink in. Stop trying to hustle and bustle at things that God is telling you to let go of. 
Some of you guys have gotten so caught up and wanting to do things your own way or you're trying to hold on to old jobs and you're trying and that listen, that's not for everybody. Cause there's some of you guys who are called to be in a certain job or you're called to a certain career. This ain't for you then. But this is for those of you who know that that job is drying up. You know that that well has run dry. You know that those people are trying to keep you out. You know that you no longer belong there. You know that it's time for you to leave. You know it and you feel it in your spirit that it's time to go and you don't know what it is, but you just feel the need like, I don't think I need to be here anymore. But you can't see the other side of your obedience at the moment. And because you can't see, you don't trust. And because you don't trust in God to be able to fulfill the fact that he will be your provider, as it says in Matthew 6, 33, you can't leave the very things of which are in front of you. Take heed and take hold of scripture. Take heed and take hold of his word and know and trust and believe as he says, O ye of little faith. He only requires us to have a seed the size of a mustard seed of faith. That is about one to two centimeters. That is very small. And yet that same seed grows into this huge mind to listen, ginormous tree. My God. My God, stop chasing wealth. Stop chasing the wealth. Stop chasing the things. Chase God. Follow God. Abide in God. Praise God. Worship God. And watch him bless you magnificently in ways that you couldn't even have imagined. He wants to bless you. But he also is going to test you to make sure that he can trust And he needs you to see, he needs you to see that you have matured, that you have leveled up. He needs you to see whom he has called you to be. He needs you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that marvelous are the the works of his hands. That means you are marvelous. That means you are marvelous. You are wonderfully, you are fearfully made. You are beautiful. You are handsome. You are amazing. You are a powerhouse. You are anointed. You are who, Jesus? You have healing in your hands. There are miracles and signs and wonders that can be able to come through you because of God. There is purpose inside of you because of God. There are things that he's going to allow you to do that us have not. There are innovative creations that are getting ready to birth out of you. There's creativity that is flowing inside of you. There are things of which he's getting ready to allow you to see within yourself that no one else could have imagined. There are gifts and dreams and visions that are locked inside that he's getting ready to open up even now. There are chains that are breaking off of you. Chains of who? Chains of bondage. Chains of poverty. Chains of lack that he is breaking off of you even now so you can be able to walk in the very things of where he is calling you. There are muzzles that have been placed upon some of your mouths that have kept you from speaking the word of God. And it is in this hour where he needs you to profess boldly the love of God, the word of God, and all of the prophecies of which he has given unto you even now. Be bold in the things of which you say and understand that persecution is part of the job. Do not be afraid of the persecution because as I said before, this is not our home. This is not our home. This is not our home. It's not, we're here, but it is not our home. So don't get so caught up in trying to please those who are here when the one that you should be pleasing is an audience of one. It is only an audience of one. My God. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ooh, thank you, Lord. For those of you who are new to the channel, for Ignite Your Glow, like, share, subscribe, Send this to a loved one who needs to be encouraged on this day. Allow yourself to be filled up on this day. Continue to abide in God and watch as he abides in you. Continue to draw nearer to God and watch as he draws nearer to you. Continue to seek God and watch him find you. Continue to knock on the door and watch the door be opened unto you. Continue to allow God into your heart and into your life and into the ways in which you are doing things and watch him shift some things for you on this day in this moment, in this hour right now, because he is the God who is able and that he can, because his word says that he is able to do abundantly and exceedingly above more than what we could ever ask, hope, or think of my God. Watch him do it for you on this day. I'm excited for y'all. Hooey, I'm excited. All right, y'all, I'm out. It's Jessica Harris again of Ignite Your Glow. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. Have an amazing day.